Hello, uh, this is Matt, the creator of the Ruby language. And thank you for having me in the Ruby Day conference. Uh, because of the pandemic, so that it is very difficult to visit and see you face to face. But uh, uh, thanks for the technology, we can uh, communicate via the internet. But today, as a keynote speaker, I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about the Ruby 3.0 and beyond. Uh, Ruby 3. Uh, Ruby 3 was uh, released on December 25th, uh, 2020, so last Christmas. We got uh, the, the big release. The, the goal of the, the release was being concurrent and uh, being formant and be productive. Uh, concurrency is uh, accomplished by the Raptor and Async Fiber, and uh, performance is uh, GC uh, accomplished by the GC improvement and GIC compiler, and the uh, productivity is uh, tried to uh, accomplish the, by the Ruby signature RDS and the type graph. The the basic design goals of the Ruby 3 is the compatible and then being faster and being better. The, let me explain them one by one. The compatibility. Uh, I declare that almost all 2.x programs, Ruby programs, run on uh, Ruby 3, 3.0 without any modification. Almost all, uh, because compatibility matters. That uh, to confess, as a language designer, I feel every day that designing a language is difficult. The harder than you may think. Uh, Ruby should be stable, and then that compatibility matters. But at the same time, we need to move forward. Because we are the open source community, we, the community members have no obligation so that they are not forced to use Ruby, so that they use Ruby spontaneously, and they, they use Ruby because they love Ruby. But once they board, they just gone. Go to any other programming language or community or tools or whatever. But, uh, if we stop moving forward, if we stop progressing, uh, we will die as a community. So that, that's the fate of the open source software. The, it's kind of a contradiction because we have to keep compatibility so that we have to uh, we have to be, be very careful to make changes, especially in compatible ones. But at the same time, we have to keep moving forward, keep making changes. The language designers, including me, makes mistakes. So that yeah, I I want to fix them in the past, the past failures, and uh, if they can. You know, the, but uh, sometimes, so that they, the people, the community relies on the, the you know, our mistakes, our bad design. So that fixing them could lead to the incompatibility. The, once in a while, we release the major versions like our 2.0, 3.0. But those major releases seems to be a chance to uh, fix those mistakes. That we are at least I am very tempted uh, to fix those bugs, those mistakes, the breaking existing programs. 
Okay, it's major release. Probably it might be okay to break the the language if it's not, you know, the lethal, the serious. But the, the history uh, told us it's not the way. Uh, we have a huge difference between the apps and languages. So that if you if you provide the application, web application, for example, and then adding one for the you know menu items, the or the change the design of the buttons or something like that, so that human can easily adapt. But if if you break the language or the API, the applications, the the programs uh, on top of the those API and the syntax cannot adapt automatic, automatically. So that you know the it's the huge difference. So that our great chance to change can be our great chance to break the existing code. And that that could be pain, huge pain to developers. Yeah, in the history of the Ruby language, we suffer the something named the Ruby one nine tragedy. Uh, we, when I released the Ruby one nine, then I had to make some incompatible change to support the some kind of the encoding, the the strings encoding support to for the better Unicode support, and then we added several other things that introduced the incompatibility. So that Ruby 1.9 and Ruby Ruby 1.8, the previous version, has the, some kind of the, the compatibility gap. And then that led us for the, some kind of the community split for more than five years. So that, that some part of the community uh, kept using the older version of the language for a long, long time. That we core developers work on, on a newer version, 1.9, 2.0, and then we make uh, improvement on the language implementations, virtual machines, garbage collectors, but uh, the some part of the community cannot reach to that kind of in improvement because they stay keeping, uh, stay using uh, older versions. Uh, that is kind of a tragedy. So some part of the community are left out. A uh, similar situation happened in other languages. Uh, the, we we saw the the community split in the Python community between the Python two and Python three, and uh, the in the PHP community, so the uh, the core developers created the new language called the PHP six, but the, it was too drastic. And uh, uh, they lost the compatibility to to the the previous versions, uh, PHP five, so that uh, the community did not want to follow the uh, follow the changes. So that uh, PHP six was cancelled, and they start all over from PHP seven, the keeping compatibility to uh, PHP five. Uh, Similar things happened in ECMAScript. Uh, ECMAScript 4 has introduced had introduced uh, many drastic changes, like a class classes and uh, uh, many uh, static typing or many things. And it, uh, but uh, they lost compatibility beyond to the previous ECMAScript 3. So the, uh, the ECMAScript 4 was canceled and the day started all over again from the ECMAScript 3, then uh, started a new version, ECMAScript 5, which is compatible to ECMAScript 3. And then they gradually added new things and then actually the, we see the many things we aban they abandoned in ECMAScript 4, in uh, ECMAScript 6, 
and then more newer version of the ECMAS, uh, JavaScript. But uh, you know, adding everything one up once, uh, breaking compatibility does not work well with the community. Uh, we programmers love new things. Yeah, we love new things, but at the same time, we hate pain forced by new things. That's the reason compatibility matters. So that there is a lesson we learned, uh, progress without breaking the path. We have to make progress, improvement, without breaking the path. We should keep compatibility. We try to keep good compatibility. Uh, new features should be uh, designed, keep, uh, keeping compatibility in mind. Uh, except for a few bug fixes, and uh, some programs can rely on the buggy, uh, buggy behavior. Uh, I have to confess, uh, Ruby 3.0 did not keep the 100% compatibility because we had to fix the keyword arguments. And uh, uh, to design, uh, to fix the confusion, uh, around uh, the keyword arguments, we have to introduce the minor incompatibility. So that uh, that's that's sad, but that, but uh, I I think previous behavior uh, had a, some kind of the, the bugs in in the design uh, design bugs we had to fix. Uh, except those uh, corner cases, uh, we try keeping compatibility for Ruby 3.0. Second, performance. Uh, performance matters. We, yeah, as I told you, we suffered the Ruby 1.9 tragedy and the five plus years uh, community split. And the Python community had, had similar things in the Python 3 problem. And they suffered 10 more years to migrate to Python 3. So that compared to the community, we suffered for five years, they suffered for 10 years. So what's the difference? Yeah, I can list several uh, reasons because of the Python community is far bigger than Ruby community. And, uh, uh, but uh, the biggest difference, I think, is the we had a, a new virtual machine. The Ruby 1.9, along with the many incompatibility, that we introduced a new virtual machine called named the YAL, yet another Ruby virtual machine, uh, which is far faster than 1.9, I, I mean 1.8. So the community uh, forced to migrate to the newer version 1.9, but the uh, if they pay the price of migrating the newer virtual machine, the, their program runs two times, or maybe uh, in, the, in the, some artificial, artificial uh, case, uh, 50 times faster. So that it runs, the newer version runs far faster than the one gate. The performance matters so that we learn the performance models. Uh, developers are willing to pay the price when their code run faster. But uh, uh, if they got the, you know, say, cleaner language or, you know, less confusion or more intuitive language, you know, that doesn't matter that much. You know, yeah, cleaner is nice. Yeah, the more intuitive is nice. Uh, but uh, performance is gold. The performance heals problem. Yeah, and then performance uh, forms reputation. You know, we love performance comparison, so that we have a lot of performance comparison uh, blog articles and uh, news news feeds or something. But uh, how we measure? How we measure performance of the language? And 
Uh, program language has, has many aspects. We cannot assume how they are used. Uh, we, the, some programming languages are used to create games, create web applications, in the science and computing, or text processing, and how we measure those that are performance of the language by micro-benchmarks. <laughs> Calculating Fibonacci numbers, or factorial numbers, or Fibonacci numbers, or word counting. Uh, are they related to the real world performance? I don't think so. It's pretty fun story for, you know, city chat. But, you know, but the, from my observation, people make decisions of both assumptions, like a micro benchmark. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> but the performance forms the repetition, in fact, Ruby is fast enough for most of the cases. For example, GitHub runs on the Ruby on Rails, Shopify runs on uh, Ruby on Rails, Instacart is on Ruby, right? Well, other many uh, big services uh, run on uh, Ruby on Rails, and it, they are fast enough. You know, they are not fastest, but, uh, you know, that they are okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, performance, uh, when people talk about the performance of the languages, they they talk about the micro benchmarks, the micro benchmark from mutation. Okay, okay, okay. We will improve in performance not only for web applications, the real world applications, but for micro benchmarks too. Uh, that's why we had been working on the many aspects of the language uh, on a virtual machine. Uh, we have improved the garbage collectors a lot. For example, the, in Ruby 2.1, we have introduced uh, generational garbage collectors. Ruby 2.2 uh, in, introduced the incremental garbage collector. Uh, Ruby 2.6 uh, introduced transient heap, which recycles the memory memory region for the short-lived object. And uh, Ruby 2.7 introduced object compaction. And then Ruby 2. Point, since Ruby 2.4, we have introduced the better data structures, like we we implemented the hash data structure, hash table data structure, or the implementation of the instance uh, variable tables or many, or many aspects. And finally, uh, we have introduced the uh, MJIT, JIT compiler, since Ruby 2.6. Uh, JIT compiler stands for the just-in-time uh, compiler, so that they, uh, it dynamically generates native code, so that uh, we can skip the, the the instruction fetch in the virtual machine, and it runs in the, the speed of the native code. The goal, one of the goals of the uh, Ruby 3 is the Ruby 3 by 3, which means the Ruby 3 will uh, run three times faster than Ruby 2.0 in some benchmarks, especially in the after carrot benchmark, which is our you know, the standard benchmark for the, the JIT compiler. Uh, OptiCarrot is the, the NES, uh, Nintendo Emulated System the emulator. The, it's not the micro benchmarks, but the, kind of the artificial benchmarks. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it counts its performance by the, the frame per second of the you know, the Nintendo games. By running under the Ruby 2.0, the OptoCarrot runs in 32.47 frames per second. The Ruby 3.0 without JIT, uh, OptoCarrot runs 44.46 frames per second. Yeah, that's run fast. A um, little bit faster. And the uh, Ruby, oh, I mistake, Ruby 3.0, with JIT, 
98.36 frames per second with JIT. That means that uh, by using JIT compiler, the auto carrot runs uh, three times faster. Uh, MJIT is the is a great way to improve the micro benchmark, improve the performance of the micro benchmark. But it has some drawbacks. It has some compilation cost and security concerns and an ICAS problem. Uh, MJIT has more uh, compilation costs than compared to the, the JIT compiler in other languages. Because MJIT kicks the, the GCC or CLAN, the, the C compiler processes. It's portable because of the, you know, if GCC or CLAN is available on, the, on that platform, the JIT compiler can be uh, achieved. So the uh, MJIT generates C source code from out of the, the bytecode, then compiles those C, C source code into into the, the dynamic link library and then load those dynamic link library to the process. That in, the MJIT requires the process invocation, then the deal open to dynamic link the the compiled library, which is which can be very you know very heavy task. You know, we have we have optimized those processes uh, a lot. Now, at first, we uh, when I have propose I have been proposed that the engine proposal, I was kind of surprised. I I tried similar things in the past, but uh, I failed because the the comparison process was so slow. In, in my trial, but uh, uh, the people behind the, the engine was so brilliant, so that they reduced the compilation cost so much that uh, MJIT, even though the, the invoking the processes, uh, the performance compilation cost is comparable to the, the JIT compiler in other programming languages. Uh, but still, but still, uh, the MJIT is heavy weight that it's compiled. The second second concern uh, is the second problem is a security concern. Uh, some servers, some hosting sites, do not allow compilers in their servers. Uh, some even do not allow JIT compiler in the processes, so that. Uh, those those under those regulations so that we cannot use the JIT compiler. So that that is a second problem. Uh, the iCache problem. Uh, too many C functions consumes iCache instruction cache so that uh, the that could hinder the performance of the uh, program. The in that's because that's the reason MJ does not improve the Rails performance. There are so many uh, methods in the Rails program applications. So that uh, it, once we compile everything, we have too many uh, method uh, instructions to cache. So that uh, cache instruction cache are uh, easily overflow. That hinders performance. But uh, we are improving. We are improving work, uh, working on JIT. So that uh, when we first released our MJIT in Ruby 2.6, so that uh, Rails application with JIT runs uh, half uh, as yeah, two times slower <laughs> than without chat uh, without JIT. But uh, Ruby 3.0 uh, Rails application runs as fast as without JIT. So that, you know, we, we don't see 
the performance improvement yet, but uh, now we are twice, two times faster than the 2.6 in the Rails application. Uh, we are still uh, improving the performance so that we see better uh, performance by this in the future. The third one is concurrency. Uh, concurrency is also lead, uh, uh, lead from uh, the performance. I first created Ruby language in 1993, so that 28 years ago. Back then, even the fastest computer, the fastest engineering workstation has single core. Today, we have our computers have dual core, octa core, uh, 64 cores, or many, many cores. Use, use more cores, your software runs faster in general. So that uh, to run fast in, in the moder modern computers, the concurrency is a key. But uh, uh, we have jail, uh, which is the giant interpreter lock, because the Ruby virtual machine itself is not the, the thread safe. So that if we we if we don't uh, mutually lock the vir the data structure in, inside of the the virtual machine, the the program will easily crash or deadlock or or uh, suffer the race conditions. Uh, thread safe runtime is hard. The, uh, in the past, we have tried to, the fine grain lock so that uh, locking when we access the some shared data like an instance variable tables or the method table or something like that. The, we lock and unlock when we access those uh, data structures, but uh, it slows down the Ruby significantly because of the you know locking and the unlocking has cost and a fine grain uh, locking, fine grain uh, mutual exclusiveness uh, has the cost that slows down the language significantly. So that does not work well. So that that's the reason we we still have the uh, gale. Uh, the the Implementing the thread safe runtime is hard, especially for existing language. Then our ideas are uh, introducing two new uh, concurrent entities. One is the async fiber, the second is Rocker. Async for IO fiber, async fiber is for IO heavy tasks. Um, other language like uh, the Python, PHP, and uh, JavaScript has the async and uh, await in, uh, in in, their lang in those languages. And then Node.js is uh, basically single-threaded. Single uh, but uh, every I.O. comes with a call box or the I.O. with the promises. And then they gradually uh, evolve to the I.O. with async in a way. The Ruby 2 is basically uh, the blocking I.O. The Ruby 3 comes with the async I.O. with Fiverr. Uh, we use Fiverr so that we didn't add the new keywords. Yeah. Uh, we can we can switch context on I.O. operations. Then we need to specify a scheduler for uh, Fiverr, but the once we set the scheduler so that uh, we can uh, multiply I operations. Asian Fiber does not use the multi cores, but uh, uh, because of the faster context switching, uh, we we will see the faster performance on the I/O heavy operations. For example, the Falcon used Fiber's Falcon is the application server compared to the, uh, the Unicorn and Puma, but uh, because of the the faster context switching, the uh, potential uh, performance uh, performance uh, ability is far bigger. So how can we use multi-cores on the modern computers? 
for CPU desktop. The sol our solution is Raptor. The Raptor is the term we coined from Ruby Raptor. It's previously uh, called the, uh, the guild, but uh, some uh, some developers, some Ruby developers in the gaming industries claimed us, oh, okay, we oh, we have already used the, the guild in our, in our application, so that we switched the, the policy to to coin new term, Raptor. The Raptor is for the CPU intensive task, uh, isolated object spaces. The Raptors are basically isolated object spaces. Uh, communication via channels, sort of channels. And uh, we have, we don't have the uh, state sharing. Actually, the uh, we have limited object sharing. The immutable objects, for example, numbers and symbols and the frozen strings. Uh, those are, does not change so that they don't share state. And a deeply frozen object, the arrays with uh, frozen uh, data, data, immutable data structures or stuff like that, those recursively frozen objects are immutable so that uh, they can share between the routers. And, uh, as exceptions, classes and modules can be shared between the uh, between the raptors, and uh, every access to the the attributes of the classes and modules can be uh, you know, exclusive uh, can be exclusive to the lock. So the uh, heavy access to the uh, attributes of the classes can be slow. So the, As a result, we don't have the the gen interpreter lock between raptors, so that uh, raptors can run uh, independently from uh, from other raptors. It uses multi cores. It utilizes multi cores. Uh, this is a small example of the the raptors. That the Tarai is the the recursive calculations so that it is deep, deeply nested uh, uh, recursive calculation. And uh, the first one is the, the sequential version. So the Talai, it runs the Talai try function calls four times. The second one is the parallel version. The, it creates raptors and then run try same try benchmark. So that create four raptors and then run try benchmark in in the in the four raptors. And then the parallel version runs nearly four times faster. In fact, it's three point six times faster on my benchmark uh, on my box. So that uh, the raptor is, looks very promising. Uh, to, to, the, to the truth, the raptor is still experimental, so that we need more uh, bug fixes and the, the performance improvement. But uh, uh, we can, you can play with raptors right now using the Ruby 3.0. The third one is static analysis. Uh, Ruby 3.0 should be uh, find more errors earlier. The two uh, since 2010, we are now in the age of static typing. The currently popular programming language like Go, Rust, Swift, uh, the static type programming language from the from the beginning. And uh, other the. the Dynamic programming, dynamic types programming language like PHP, Python, and JavaScript are leaning towards the static typing. The PHP and Python are the, the, the type declaration of the language, and the JavaScript has the the alternative dialect of the uh, TypeScript, which is uh, which introduced the type declaration in the language. Uh, everyone seems to go 
started typing. So that the question is, shall we? The Ruby, Ruby is the language should go to the static typing. I don't think so. I don't think so. We don't want type. We don't. We don't want declarations. We want more precise checks. Uh, we want to detect error areas, but we want code completion like VS Code does. We uh, check the error area, and then the possible uh, the, the static type checks are okay if we don't write type declaration. The to accomplish that, we introduce uh, several things. The one is the RBS, which stands for the Ruby signature. The second is the type prof, is the tool to the generate the RBS from your application. Then we have the static type checker from the third party in the community. The Ruby signature is kind of the, the D.TS counterpart of, of the TypeScript. It is the Ruby like, it's a language similar to uh, Ruby syntax and then uh, dedicated to the declare type for your Ruby applications. Uh, this is uh, the example of the RVS. The class foo has method foo, which returns nothing, and the uh, 2s method returns strings, or it may take the integer argument that returns strings, or something like that. Uh, Ruby 3 ships with the RBS for the core, the standard class libraries. Then those RBS can be used for the type checkers, the better IDEs, the better code completions, the type signature pop-ups in the in the IDE or something like that. So that we have the the plenty of room to improvement using uh, type information from RBS. And then we we have already had a several VS Code plugins for, uh, in experimental stage. The type prof is the another tool. Uh, it does uh, native type checks. Uh, I mean the naive type checks. And then it also does the obvious generation using the the technique named the abstract interpretation. For example, this is the very uh, silly Ruby example. The class foo has method foo and the foo e e b equal a plus two and then return b and then foo dot new create the instance of the foo and then call foo method with the argument 15. So we can see so that since foo method foo is called with argument 15, so the, the argument a must be integer, then a plus 2 has in, the b should be integer, then the foo, the method foo returns integer. So, the, so you can get uh, this RBS, so that class foo has method foo that takes integer and then returns integer. That's uh, type prof does similar things in uh, infers similar things. So that uh, if type prof reads the this Ruby uh, Ruby program generate this RBS. Uh, this so the you can generate at least a prototype of the Ruby signature of your application using the type prof. Then uh, type prof has a limitation. Uh, type prof is still work in progress. Uh, so that, for example, that type prof cannot distinguish the, the tuple type so that uh, uniform array for the array of integers or the array of strings or something like that, or the array, the tuple like array, like a first element is integer, second element is strings, the third element is the symbols or something like that, so that each uh, 
element has different types of meanings. So that it is difficult for type 4 to distinguish those two, two usages. So that uh, you might have to update your generated up RBS for your applications. But uh, it's, it is very uh, sufficient first step of the RBS generation for your applications. Uh, along with that, the Ruby 3.4 introduced the, some new syntax. Ruby 3 introduced some new syntax for the uh, to to Ruby better. Uh, Ruby 3 introduced the pattern matching and you know, right hand right hand side assignment ish and the numbers broke parameters. Let me explain. Uh, Ruby 2.7 and introduced the pattern matching, and then Ruby 3.4 improved that so that uh, we can uh, see the pattern matching to to you know to, to retrieve the data from the data structure or data tree. Uh, this is an example for the the read the uh, age of the Alice's son by uh, some kind of a declarative form. Along with the Ruby sequence also introduced the one line pattern matching that can be uh, used as an assignment. This this uh, equal uh, greater than sign is the the rocket sign is the one line pattern matching and then it can be used as an assignment or the, it can be used as a multi-assignment, or the, it can be used as a the decomposition. Then, uh, by using those the single line, single line pattern matching, you can use it as an assignment. We also introduce the numbered block parameters, like a one, two, three maps, uh, the under the one times two, or something like that. It is but it makes the you know the simple uh, blocks even easier. Uh, this is what we provide for, for the Ruby 3.0. And then beyond that, uh, we will keep moving forward. But uh, we declared we are not planning a uh, big changes in syntax. So we are not going to change the language syntax for, for at least for some years because of the stability models. So that we have introduced the bottom matching and some new syntax and a lot of new things so that we need to, you know, refine those changes for, for some years. And then we need to seek for completion uh, some new features may be buggy, especially rockers, so that we have to improve that. And then we need to uh, make improvement on the implementation of the, the library, the virtual machines, improvement, improve the performance. So we have a lot of things to do. And then we also encourage supporting tools for the Ruby because I believe the future of the programming is will become more and more interactive using IDEs or the plugins and the, uh, the you know the language server protocol or something like that. So that uh, without improving the tool, the language itself, so the the supporting tools can make the difference. So that. So the, we have Solar Glass for the, as a language server, protocol server. We have Solbit as a type, um, and a static type checkers. We have Rubocop for Winters. The, we have a lot of those tools, and then we in, encourage improvement on those tools. Better tools enable better user experience. We need more tools. We need type checkers. And then we we need formatters, we need server language server protocol tools, and the performance tuning tools, debuggers, with a lot of lot of new things. And then, you know, 
we didn't change a lot, change the language for, for example, the static typing, but uh, we added new tools for the language. This is similar philosophy. But, uh, adding new features, uh, instead of adding new features and syntax, uh, adding new tools can improve the experience of the programming. Uh, that's the very uh, fundamental way to improve the language in the near future. Faster there will be. Uh, we will improve the performance of the uh, language. We will, into, uh, we will work on the better jet, or maybe we will introduce the multi-layer jet. Maybe the, we have uh, the, the, the lightweight jet layer before the current MJ layer. The, the developers in the Shopify working on the something named YJet, and uh, the original also of the MJ working on the MIL, which is the, also the lightweight jet. Uh, the DIN-NASEN is the, the back end for the, the Lua jet. So the, uh, there are plenty of projects or rooms to Im implement the lightweight jet before the before the MJ. That that could that could improve the the performance of the JIT compiler. Yeah. After introducing the multi layer JIT, so the uh, ordinary programs can run in virtual machines, then some kind of the bottlenecks can be compiled into the native code using the lightweight JIT. And uh, a very he uh, heavy task in inside of the inner loops can be compiled into in the fully optimized uh, the native code using the MJIT, which is the future we predict for the JIT compiler. And uh, we also uh, in try to improve the performance of the raptors. Uh, currently, the one raptor uh, creates the one native thread, the one one to one uh, c combination. But in the future, maybe so that we have we will have the the, the user level threads on top of the uh, native thread, so that we can create the millions of raptors on top of the uh, several the native threads of the maybe corresponding to the number of the cores of, on top of the on, on the machine. Uh, the in the presentations I I uh, give a pre uh, presentation for the you know the, some crazy idea for the future. The, I have some kind of static barrier idea. The Ruby is pretty dynamic programming language. It is. It caused a very flexible uh, part of the language yeah. by using the metaprogramming and the, the, those dynamic aspects. The the your program will be very flexible, but uh, at the same time, it makes many things pretty difficult to optimize. So that we might. <laughs> Introduce the static barrier to the language. Then once we cross those barrier, well, some dynamics aspect aspects will be prohibited beyond the static barrier. Uh, maybe uh, beyond those barriers, method redefinition or the monkey passing will be uh, prohibited, so that uh, you can implement the the method cache more effectively, efficiently. Or maybe uh, this compiler can be more efficient. And uh, I'm I'm trying to uh, investigate these crazy ideas. This is one of them. And uh, anyway, the as a core Ruby developer, we will keep moving forward. We will improve the language. We will improve the the user experience of the Ruby programmers to create a better world. And uh, I hope you too, that 
I hope you to join us. They contribute to the community, to make、uh, rails better, or maybe you contribute to the, the, the revisions, or maybe you, you contribute to the existing open source software, or maybe you can be a, a join other、uh, code, our core developers, or something like that. Then you can join us to make the better world.、Uh, this, is, this is my presentation. Yeah, thank you for join, joining us and thank you for having me. And、uh, see you face to face in the future. Bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. And there he is live. Mats, welcome. Yeah, hi. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for coming. It was,、uh, as you might see, there is、uh, already a lot of hype about you being here. So, <laughs> yeah. And we're that, super yes, glad to have you. Sorry for the video quality. Yeah, probably,、uh, no. <laughs> probably I mean, have some issues. In life、COVID. is proving difficult for everyone these days. So, nothing to be sorry about. <laughs> Thank you. There, It happens, so no worries. And everybody loved the talk, anyways. I'm, I'm looking left because I have a second screen、uh, there with the, with the chat.、Um, the audio was perfect, so people could, could still follow. No problem、oh, whatsoever.、You. Yeah.、Uh, we were asking if there were people with some questions、uh, in the chat.、Um, and Luca was actually saying that he has one. So let's see.、Uh, What he says over there.、Um, there was a, a comment、uh, also by Luca that was、uh, along the lines of like, so monkey patching is prohibited?、Um, I, I'm not going to prohibit monkey patching, <laughs> but uh, uh, you have to be careful when you use that because the, it could ruin the other.、Uh, other Other people in the team. Absolutely.、Uh, how much yeah, do you example, agree yeah, with, yeah, yeah.、Uh, with the、um, saying that Ruby is a very sharp knife? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For example, the, the active support is pretty convenient, but uh, you know, but the, everyone does similar things in everywhere, so that the, it is dif too difficult to handle the changes. Everywhere, so that it should be encapsulated in the very small portion of the, your application, for example, in the, the active support or your own、uh, the monkey patching library or something like that. But that's okay, but、uh, you know, the monkey patching itself should be encapsulated in the certain places. And、uh, yeah, in, addition, in addition, we introduced the、uh, refinement. Which is much, much, much more modular to、uh, handle the enhancement of the existing classes. Makes perfect sense.、Um, also, in my experience, whenever, whenever you do something special, it should be obvious that it's special.、Uh, <laughs> and I mean, the whole point of Ruby is to have code that can speak for itself.、Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's how you should also apply that principle to how you structure your applications.、Um, let me see if there's any other questions in here. I don't see any.、Um, anything else that you would like to add to what you、uh, just shared in,、uh, in your talk? Some last minute. Thoughts.、Uh, the, so that you know, Ruby is、uh, focused on providing the freedom to the develop developers. So that、uh, you know, the, remember that kind of the sharp knife talk. That, yes. You know, the Ruby provides the freedom, but、uh, you have to be responsible about the、uh, freedom. So that the freedom does not care about the.、Uh, You know, ethics, or maybe, and you know, the maybe hinders others. The, so that you have to be、uh, responsible for your freedom. So that you have to be、uh, 
act like a grown up to your smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, um. Yeah, that's that is what uh you know the both sides. You know, it, everything has two sides. You know, it you can enjoy your freedom, but at the same time you can abuse that freedom to uh you know the ruin the maintainability of your application or something like that. The, uh, I don't want to uh, take that kind of freedom away from developers, but I want to provide the maximum free freedom for the developers. But uh, each Ruby developers must be responsible for that kind of freedom. Absolutely. Uh, after all, we are a community, uh, therefore <laughs> we should also think about uh, how others experience our freedom. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So that. Oh, there uh, is the in, question. Uh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Um, given rectors are the gateway for next chapter of Ruby and to keep it relevant, can we expect new native immutable type structures and operations to work on existing data structures? Manually frozen is pretty expensive. Uh, Right now, I have I don't have plan to provide uh, uh, add new uh, immutable data structure to the, to the language. But uh, instead, it I I would like to provide the way to create the existing uh, arrays and the, the strings and the hashes in the the immutable mode. So the uh, class is same, but uh, uh, we we are going to have some kind of that way to create the immutable array mm -hmm. from the from the scratch or immutable uh you know map or hash table from the scratch or something yeah makes sense we are working on it nice um I, I'm saying nice because we just encountered that in uh, in my uh, in my company. So I was like, yeah, we, we have to do it manually all the time. Uh, no worries. Um, another question. Will RBS ever support an inline syntax or is that too complex to fit in the Ruby grammar? This is a question by Stefano. What is fit in the Ruby grammar? Um, having an inline syntax for RBS. Oh, uh, the it should be provided by the the third party tool. So that uh, some some people in the community working on the generating RBS from the YAD documentation. So that that could be help. And then mm -hmm. the other guy is working on the the VS Code plugin, which uh, oh. displays the RBS information in your uh, Ruby program. Okay, so that's that cool. you can you, you can see the RBS information from Ruby program without uh, adding you know without adding Sounds comments or language. anything like that. Yeah. The, uh, you know the basically the static type analysis things should be done in the done outside of the Ruby syntax and the grammar because of now in the far future. So that we, the our compiler will be smart enough to uh, infer everything uh, mm -hmm. from our code, so that we can communicate with the comp compilers to uh, specify the type or the, you know, so that we don't have to write down the declaration in explicitly. So that uh, if we add the type of declaration in the syntax, it's, it is nearly impossible to remove that in the future. So that, that's the reason I don't want to add the type annotation, type declaration in, in the syntax. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah. We have another question. Oh, people are starting to warm up. Um, without considering performance constraints, and with mm -hmm. a long-term effort, are there some exotic features you'd love to have in Ruby, borrowing from other languages, or even something that is not there yet? Uh, one thing I'm try to uh, 
introduced it to the Ruby language is the some kind of the packaging system. So that, for example, Java or Py, uh, Python has the, the module system more strict mm -hmm. than Ruby. So that that is sometimes useful. So that I'd like to work on something similar. But at the same time, I don't want to write down the import something, package something every time. So that uh, we have to some kind of the you know uh, compromise. We have to make some kind of the compromise. So sometimes we have to use the those kind of the structured uh, packaging system. But uh, most of the cases, we don't want to write down that kind of things explicitly. Export, uh, import sys, import OS, or something like that. Yes, especially because they take a lot of real estate at the beginning of a file. So yes, then the yes. interesting part is that the file bottom, right? with a lot of import lines, and then that that, that those things I don't want that. that kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't see any further questions for now. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be happy to have you hanging around in our hallway track or, of course, for, for the rest of the conference. Um, so for the moment, I'm going to say uh, goodbye. Thank you so much again. And uh, sorry for me interrupting all the time. Um, yeah. I, I'm yeah. Italian. It becomes natural. Uh, <laughs> being rude. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going um, to have a dinner with my family, but later I, I will join you again. And then, oh, yeah, that will be awesome. Hanging around the chat. <laughs> thank you so very much. Have a yeah, long thank evening. you. Yeah. See you later. Yeah, see you later. <laughs>